as the oldest, largest, and one of the most respected hospices in Southern Nevada, people often ask us, how does hospice deal with the spiritual needs of the patient and their family? Together with physical, social, and emotional care, we use spiritual care to make sure that no patient goes through their end of life journey alone, afraid, or in pain. I'm Chaplain Matt Metavellis from Nathan Adelson Hospice. I've been here since 2009, and I've worked in hospice and spiritual care for almost 10 years. In hospice, caring for a patient's spiritual needs begins by understanding their expectations, beliefs, and boundaries. This work is done by our chaplains, our spiritual care specialists, who reach out to you and the people closest to you so that we understand how you want to approach the dying process. We do this for people with strong spiritual beliefs, people struggling with their spiritual beliefs, and people who claim no spiritual beliefs at all. What is the role of a chaplain? We found that some patients and families prefer to use our chaplains for spiritual care. Our chaplains are available to provide help and support as soon as a patient is admitted into hospice. While spending time with the chaplain, families can find the strength they need to confront the challenges of this critical time. What if I want my own priest, rabbi, or other spiritual leader? If you want to use your own spiritual advisor, we support your choice. Your existing relationship can be very meaningful during this stressful time. We encourage you to be in regular contact with them so that their care can be successfully scheduled. And if you need us to call them for you, please let us know as soon as possible. What can I expect to feel after a loss? And each person grieves in their own way. How long it will last and how intensely you'll experience the loss varies from person to person. This experience can change day by day, and even moment to moment. One day, you might be doing better. On another day, you may find yourself struggling with tears, anger, or loneliness. Some people experience intense emotional pain and despair that disturbs their eating, sleeping, memory, and energy. Some people feel a sense of shock, numbness, or even relief. Over time, this gives way to sadness as the reality of the loss kicks in. These feelings can be very intense and terribly overwhelming. And so the best advice is to be patient and flexible, both with yourself and with others. What might trigger painful reminders or depressing episodes? As the weeks turn into months, people in grief experience what are commonly called triggers. A place, an object, or an experience, sometimes expected, sometimes surprising, can trigger a sharp and painful reminder of your loss. It could be as simple as remembering a favorite song or knowing that today is the opening game of your loved one's favorite sports team, or even just choosing an outfit to wear. You should know that you can't avoid triggers. And you should also know that there are healthy ways to deal with your feelings when they are triggered. When you're in the throes of a grief trigger, the feelings can be overwhelming. And sometimes it's okay to just stop and acknowledge that those feelings are there. Often these feelings are made worse when we begin to judge ourselves or think that we shouldn't feel a certain way. In my own life, I've had losses from years and years ago, and I still experience fresh triggers. It's okay to do so. It's okay to acknowledge that at times we are still grieving and to know who the people are we can reach out to when we feel like we are really struggling with our triggers. Who can I turn to? When you feel overwhelmed, lost, empty or stuck, don't be afraid to reach out for support. Grief support can take place in one-on-one -on -one sessions with a professional or within support groups. Reaching out for support is not a sign of weakness or that you're failing to handle your grief. Rather, it's a positive sign of strength and it shows your commitment to healing and to recovery. How does the grieving process change over time? 
As time goes by, expressions of sympathy from family, co-workers, and neighbors begin to diminish, yet your own grief can feel overwhelming. Some people believe that painful grief actually prolongs their connection to their loved one. Your loved one can be treasured in less painful ways without losing your deep appreciation for what you had together. Over time, healing can take on new forms, you might move in new directions with your life, and find new people to connect with or new communities to join. Now, these are positive steps, but let me emphasize, they take time. There's no need to push yourself to do something that you're not ready to handle. If you want to learn more about spiritual care and hospice, click out the link below for an in-depth article on the subject. Grief is a personal journey. For each person, it's a unique and unfolding story. There'll be better moments, bad moments, and plain dreadful moments. Grief is something that can be weathered and endured Reach out for support when you need to. Don't be afraid. Grief is not an illness or a personal failure. It's a difficult but natural part of the human experience. Grief is another expression of the love that you had and still have for somebody who's gone. Know that no matter how bad you feel today, you will not feel that way forever. And know that we at Nathan Adelson Hospice are ready to be with you on this journey. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us at the link below or leave a comment in the comment section.